friends and welcome back to Bush Rats. Yet here today with Young Lee. Woo, someone's shooting. Anyways, welcome back to Bush Rats. Yet here in the pine forest today with Young Lee. Today we've just gone for a little bit of a cruise down to an old faithful dam. Uh, you would have seen it a couple of times if you watch any of our yabbying episodes. Um, and we're going to test out something new. These little things here, these are called bait bombs by Nolsey. Now if you remember that guy Shannon Noel. Yep, that bloke. He's obviously right into his yabbying and uh, mud crabbing and that, so he's invented this little thing here. It's a little bait bomb. It's got a little mesh screen inside it. Yeah, like I said, a little mesh screen. Pop that in there into the little plastic container. Real high quality, hard plastic, and you put your uh, dog biscuits, your pellets. Uh, in our case, I'm going chicken. Pop them in there, pop them into your uh, net. And uh, off you go, so it saves you having to clean out stockings or undoing zip ties and all that sort of thing. So, nice handy little piece of kit. We're going to load up two nets, we're going to chuck them into this dam here. Give it about 15, 20, half an hour, see so how we go. Let's get a net in. Alright guys, so we've got two different types of nets going in this one little dam today. First off, the old opera house net. Highly illegal, like I said, in uh, any other waterways. If you check our other videos, we go through the specs on these. We've used them a few times down yabbing in private dams. The next one is a mesh bottom open top classic vintage looking one. One of my mates got me this, so keen to test it out, see how it goes. The PBC pipe holding it open. A bit of tarp, a bit of shade cloth, a bit of square mesh. So uh, we'll chuck one in each end, give it half an hour, 20 minutes, and check them. Uh, like I said, we're only trying to get about a good dozen. I reckon a dozen will be right for a feed. We've got something nice to cook up. We might do it uh, later on today or tomorrow, but either way, we're doing a catch and cook. Alright guys, so we're going to give that about, someone's doing a bit of target practice. We're going to give that about 15, 20 minutes, let them soak. We'll do a little bit of an impatient check. Um, so this little dam, this one's probably been the most productive first out of the three videos we've made here. Um, obviously we don't want to go hammer it too hard, so we're just going to take what we need. And hopefully this winter it'll fill up and the yabbies will get breeding and the numbers will pick back up in all the little dams around here. So we're going to have a coke and a smoke and we'll see in a little bit. Alright, so she's been about 15 20 minutes. Uh, I'm pretty impatient, so we might have an impatient pool. Uh, just see what's going on, see if there's any in there. As far as I'm aware, the yabbying is better in the hotter months, uh, whereas Marin is in the cooler months. I like the cool, but the season's obviously in summer. Uh, but yabbies, yeah, I think they go a little bit quiet in the winter. As far as I'm aware, if I'm wrong, let me know, drop a comment. Uh, yeah, let's go check these nets. Two little decent ones. 
Oh, eight bombs falling apart. So first pull on the impatient pull, we got two half decent sized ones. So these aren't native to over here in WA. Um, but every now and then you get some real stonkers, but these aren't too bad. So I might hang on to these two, see how many we get in the other net. Chuck this back out, and I think, uh, you know, if we get a two each sort of pool, we only need, like I said, 10 or a dozen for a bit of a cook up. So I'll chuck them in the uh, Hessian bag with a bit of water. We'll check the other net. Hessian bag all wet. One, two. Pop the bait bomb back in there and uh, skin it back out. Check the other net. Must be better. Good. Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll go through them, but uh, hell, this might even be enough. We'll uh, see what we got. I'll grab the Hessian bag. The old nosy bait bomb doing the trick. What about me? So a few nice ones in here about this size. A couple little wee tackers. I'll pop them back. What have we got here? We got one, two. That was not bad at all. Three, four, five, six. Bring the camera down. Bring the camera down. Seven, eight. No one sort of good ones there. Another small boy here. He can go back. Pop me bait bomb back in there. I think give him it's another 10 minutes. If we can get maybe five more, I'd be pretty happy with that. So here we go. Take these fellas. Back to the car. The day's starting to warm up. The old weatherman must be on drugs because he reckons it was going to be a thunderstorm today. Anything going on here is someone shooting. But I'm going to go the GoPro on this one, get a different perspective, check these nets, and uh, get out of here and go cook some lunch. Net one. Ooh. Sounds a bit better in there. Oh, good dozen or so on that one. Pop this down. Check the other one. We'll come back. The old opera house. Just the one in that one. So he can go back. See you later, buddy. Empty out the old bait bombs. Just pull the mesh out. Done. Not bad, Shannon Noel. Not bad. Alright, let's go through what we got in here. See, so we only need, I don't know, five or six more, so we'll just take the bigger ones. Oh. Oop, a couple of little ones in there. I'm going to take you. Taking you. Taking you, taking you. What else we got? We'll take this one, and the rest of these can go back. We'll get them next time. Only take what you need, guys. Empty the old bait bombs. Bada bim, bada boom. Pop these blokes in the Hessian bag. Blow this joint. The old vintage net didn't do too bad. Pretty happy with this one. Vintage net. The old opera house, like I said, these are illegal unless it's on like a private property or private dam sort of thing. Definitely don't be throwing these in the your local waterways.
So we'll pack her up and we'll go find somewhere nice and majestic for a bit of a cook up. We'll have to get Tony out for one of these yabby missions. I don't think he's been on a yabby mission yet. So come on guys, let's go. Turns out the weatherman may have been onto something here. Uh, it's the next day today. As I was driving home from Yabian, a storm kind of came through. It's been raining all night, all morning, but I thought, may as well head out, you know, that's winter for you. So you've got to deal with a little bit of rain. So let's run through everything you're going to need here. So firstly, the Yabbies from yesterday, I've ducked home, uh, put a pot of water on to boil, uh, a little bit of salt, chucked them all in there for about uh, three or four minutes. Um, so slightly undercooked because we're going to be re-cooking them again today, so you don't want to overcook them. Um, so straight out of there into an ice bath uh, to cool them right down straight away uh, to stop that um, cooking process. Uh, peeled them all up and here they all are. So what we're going to be making today is like a reef and beef, uh, kind of like a surf and turf, uh, more of like a dam and spam coming out of the dam. So yabbies, first thing you're going to need. Next up. Bit of beef. Got this one from the local butchers. Marinated in a bit of spice there and a bit of olive oil. Going to be doing this one with uh, some spuds. So there's a couple of spuds. This one goes out for you, uh, Spud King. Been, one of our subscribers been telling him we're going to be using some spuds uh, every cooking episode. So we've finally got around to it. So we've got them. We're going to pop them in some alpha with a bit of butter into the coals. So obviously, a bit of butter. A bit of garlic to go with your uh, garlic prawns or garlic uh, yabbies, I should say. So there's some homegrown garlic that I've blitzed up in a little bit of oil. A bit of cream. And last but not least, a little bit of greenery just for some aesthetics purposes. So a bit of parsley here out of the garden. So the first thing we're going to want to do is probably get these uh, potatoes into the coals. I'm probably going to cut them in half, a little bit of butter in with the alfoil um, and sit them in the coal. So they're probably going to take a little while, they're quite large. So Straighten the coals, we'll get them in, and we'll go from there. As always, going to need a little bit of salt. Put salt on them. Wrap them up nice and tight. So the old spuds will probably take the coals like that, maybe 45. So I'm just waiting for some of that jarrah to sort of break down into coals and then we'll sort of spread it all around the uh, potatoes there. But I've been a bit impatient. So we'll just get them there to start warming up. In the meantime, we'll go through all the other things you might need. So I've got a nice little pan here. I'm gonna do the uh, garlic yabbies in this. And same as the last cooking episode, I've got my old trusty campfire uh, grill hot plate thingo. So once again, special thanks to Campfire Australia. They've been hooking us up with some good gear from the hot plate to little cast iron kettles. Check that out. What a nifty little thing that is. So, uh, the old big Bushman's sort of style. Pots and pans, cast iron pots. So they anything to do with cooking, they've got it. So they've got those little tripod stand things as well there, Ripper. So I'm keen to try all these things out. So we give them spuds about half an hour. Let them start doing their thing, start warming up, start cooking, to get that butter going all through them. And until that sort of happens, it's time to kick back and wait for the rain to come down. Hmm. All right, 
hot so them spuds aren't too far away now. Got the hot plate on, ready to go. It's getting a bit of heat into that. Rain's just started to set in, so we might have to change the camera angles here, uh, get the camera out of the rain. So once this is nice and hot, we're gonna chuck the steak on and uh, start prepping up the yabbies. Steak is on, rain's setting in. We put this pan on, get some heat into that, and we're gonna get the yabbies into there soon too. All right, got a bit of heat in that pan now. Battling the rain. I'm gonna bomb the yabbies in, heat them back up. A little dollop of garlic. Fair bit of garlic, I like my garlic. Steak sizzling up nicely. Garlic starting to cook through. Now we're just going to pop the cream in there with the yabbies and the garlic and let it uh, simmer away until it gets nice and thick. Add half of that, add half of that. A little bit of salt in there. Weather's really started to set in now, but my garlic sauce is good to go. Steak's pretty much there. I'm gonna pull these potatoes out, lay it out, and I'll show you what we've made. Spuds are nice and soft. Pick out a couple of them. Nice bit of color on them. So we're gonna smoosh them up. It's kind of like a mashed potato, but they call it a potato crush. You just crush them up, skins on. Something just like that. There's your steak. Nice bit of colour on that. Sitting at about a medium, I like mine about medium. And last but not least, a bit of garlic yabby sauce. Check that out. There we have it guys, damn and spam, reef and beef, yabbies with a crushed potato, spuds there for you Spud King. Now after all that I have forgotten a knife and fork, so I'm going to give it a taste test with the old knife. We'll try a yabby first, the rain is really coming in, grab a chair, Oop, can't see anything, bit of beef. You can't beat something that's fire cooked, I reckon. Some spud, a bit of spud, dip that in the sauce. Nice simple one, this one, guys. Obviously, you've got to catch some yabbies. Prawns work just as well. Marin, even. Real happy with that one.
I was almost going to pull the pin on the old catch and cook due to the weather, but I'm glad we stuck it out. She's, she's soggy as she's really coming down now. But, that's winter for you. A couple little nippers there as well. But the yabbies, real tasty little treats. Let's try the whole lot together, eh? Bit of steak, bit of spud, bit of yabby. Just going in it with the hands, guys, but. Not bad at all, guys. Well, that's it for this one. I'm gonna get stuck into finishing this, wait for the rain to finish and pack away the awning and put this fire out. It's pretty much out already. Um, yeah, if you like this kind of thing, like and subscribe, check out our other videos. If you want merch, bushrats.bigcartel. We've been slacking on the merch. We've got a few new shirts here and there. I think by the time this comes out, we should have some hoodies. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna pick up our game with the merch. So more designs, more tees, all available coming soon. So like I said, like and subscribe really helps the channel. Um, and we'll see you next time, guys. Out on the tracks. You.